So, one of the things that we learn here at Hawkshaven, Hawkshaven is like an ostrom. It's a place for spiritual growth, for spiritual awareness, how we build the pathway of our life to the ways that we, we want to see them. How we could spend time, okay, like right now I'm cleaning up my garden, right here, my walkways, because my walkways <laughs> are shared by many. And have you ever stepped on a Lego, barefoot? Well, sometimes stepping on fractured rocks, barefoot, is the same experience. So you can either spend a lot of time conditioning. Oh, there's another cool feature. The gong. <laughs> you can either spend your time building yourself so strong that your environment has no influence on you. You know, like walking all over needles or coals with your feet, right? would make it to where a Lego really has no... <laughs> that, that'd be nothing, right? So you create, you create enough awareness of the polarities that we can experience in life to find a lot of comfort in the middle. And when we find comfort in the middle, life gets pretty simple. That's the way nature works. Like right now, she's, she's showing you balance. She knows that she only uses that much of an area to walk on. She pays no attention to what's around her. She focuses on what she's doing. And and this little guy, he's the lickiest cat I've ever I've ever met. Look at this. He just like, every time he's like, oh, oh it's a lot. that's <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Anyway, nature nature teaches us certain things here. Nature teaches us here that you have to be careful what you wish for. Nature teaches us that when we take care of the pathway that we're walking in life, life becomes much simpler. Right? So like an example, okay, right here, I could try the goal here is to separate the things I want from the things that I don't, okay? I could try to pick this out a little bit at a time, and you know, this area that I'm intentionally picking out, it could go right here, or the goats would really like to nibble on this. It's like salad for them, okay? So I'm putting it in there, but it also works for right here. And so because this is so little, and it is taking me more time than I'd care for it to take, I wait for nature. And nature is blowing all the materials that I don't want away. And now I don't have to spend any time separating those. Now these, these are beneficial for me but not right here. And so I cast them to where they want to go. <laughs> Maybe they don't, but I'm the boss here. <laughs> this is my place. This is my space. So same thing, you know, am I am I going to am I going to dig through all this stuff and try to figure out, oh my gosh, that well that might work. You know, no. I'm going to use nature. But I need to wait for nature to help me. Oh, see? I asked for it, and it came. The wind. There. And a little bit of playing. <laughs> play, I call... I call this, like right here, I call this play yoga. And play yoga is um, pixelated landscape and life shape and yoga. I like to work with acronyms. So what I've done here is, when I when I started here, I I wasn't planning on shooting a video. I wasn't going to share everything I do here. But then I realized I'm like, no, this is this is something that people aren't always experiencing because most people 
they would, <laughs> they, they, I was one of them. That's why I can say, and, and, and by the evidence of how much weed eater line and electricity and, and gas people consume, I would say that most people, that if they had grass that was tall right through here and, and some weeds and, and sticks and all this kind of stuff, that they might just weed eat it. You know, and I mean, it's quick, it's effective, it's efficient. It's establishing something that you, you think you desire, right? But sometimes you still, you're, you're going to step in on it, and you're going to, you, you, it's going to be stepping on the Lego, right? And so, you go that way. It's like, with Weed Eater, the Weed Eater doesn't feel that that was sharp right there. The Weed Eater doesn't know that that was sharp. The weed eater doesn't know that this one right here is a food that's very high in vitamin C. It's called mallow. The weed eater doesn't know that. And because I use no chemicals on this soil, I can eat here like an animal. And my immune system is as efficient as a natural animal. And it's good. It's healthy. And when you're eating one item at a time like that, you, you fully recognize the taste, the consistency. Your body is kind of telling you almost like what it's doing for you. Right? But most of the time, all of our foods are all jumbled up together. And they... <clears throat> they taste like a concoction rather than what their source is. I want to show you something else here real quick too. I'm not going to show you. I'm not, I want to set the camera back up. But right here, right in this other pathway, are these beautifully purple leaved plants growing all over the place. Okay. And and they are delicious. They're spicy. They're mustard. And so we have these mustard leaves that are really, really tasty. And it's free. Because, I mean, like, like if, okay, so if I went and picked a few more of these, you'd get a bundle like this, it would have cost $2. But what if I don't have $2? Can I go to Safeway and say, hey, I don't have $2, but I, I want some of these leaves? Well, even though everybody there has always been friendly with me, I, I don't think that they would put up with that for very long. Especially if, if a lot of people were doing it. they say, hey, all I have is this little bit of leaves, I mean, you know, are you going to charge me $2 for this? Because I don't have it. And, and, you know, they might be tolerant of, of some, some people for some time. But the tolerance will wear out because they're providing for somebody. They're, they're having it farmed somewhere else. They're having it um, picked by somebody else. They're having it shipped by somebody else. They're having it stored for somebody else, or by somebody else, by for somebody else. And then it gets shipped to another store by somebody else, and then it gets stocked on the in the produce section by somebody else. And now somebody else has to determine if they're going to give it to you for two dollars. That doesn't make sense. In, in nature, that doesn't happen. Like, in, in nature... I wouldn't even have to have went and picked these and, and come to show you. <laughs> I could have done a push-up. And I could have eaten it right from the ground. I could have eaten it right from the ground. Because I know that no chemicals are being used on this property. I don't have to go wash it. When I water things, that washes it. They get watered every couple days, you know. 
we've stepped so far away from being natural in our lives that it seems that we're expecting somebody else to always do something for us, like like healthcare. It, like healthcare. Healthcare is kind of your own responsibility. Yeah, we'll see if I got my head in this picture. A lot of times I cut my head off. So, maybe that's better. All right. Hey, okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, lucky cat. Come here, lucky cat. Some in nature, we, um, nature doesn't have middlemen. Nature does for itself. Like th like this cat here. It it took it <laughs> it must have been at least two months before it ever even came up to me, because it was born wild. It's always lived outside. I give them some food every once in a while just to make sure that they're um, they're sustaining and um, you know and, and yeah they're pretty fun. They and, and if I if I give them a little bit of food around the house, then they hang out a little bit more often. It's like bribery, <laughs> you know, because they're wild cats. But I've never seen that any of them have been ever sick or anything like that. They've um, they've never seen a vet. But, I mean, they're just wild cats. They, they, they just like to hang out. And um, this one, this one was the first one that uh, trusted me. And it came up to me, and, and I didn't beat it up. Um, I didn't shoot it, and I didn't yell at it and throw things at it. I sat down. I said, hey, how you doing? And slowly, one by one, five of his buddies, <laughs> they all, finally, almost a year, it, it took almost a year for one of them to start coming up to me. It, and it's never let anybody touch it. But now, it comes up to me, not quite as friendly as this one, but it, it comes up to me now and hangs out, and then, like this one, I'll be petting it, and we'll, uh, and then the other one, it, now, now it gets jealous. So it comes over and it'll it'll rub up against me, or, or it'll uh, you know come up and bother this one a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'll start to pet it, and I can I can look at this. You know they they, they trust me. Look, I can pull in their tails, and they just said, "Oh, you're teasing, huh? Right? Yeah." And they've only bit me one time. That freaking hurt. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I, I've got tattoos and some gentle spot, or, you know, like, real sensitive areas, you know, like, all up in my armpit and stuff. And let me tell you, that cat latching on with <laughs> claws and teeth was, was something. And, I mean, and these things weigh, like, fuck, I don't know, eight pounds, maybe, if that. I weigh, like, 180 and I realized there, right there, we are all capable, if we're willing to act like that cat in the event of somebody that it thinks is going to hurt it, um, people should really be aware, you know what I mean, because I, like, I, I've seen, well, I mean, I, I've seen a, a video um, where somebody tried to steal some, somebody's baby or something, and I mean, it was... <laughs> the mom said, no, you don't. Boom! And shot the motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, wow. That was efficient. And she wasn't as big as that guy. Just like that little cat. I mean, like this little cat right now, if it was, like, thinking that I wanted to hurt it, I think it would, even though it hasn't before, I think it would open up his claws and he would bite on to whatever he can bite on to and hold on and, and hurt me enough that it's pretty confident that I'm just going to leave him alone. I'm like, don't mess with me, dude. I may be little, but I'm, I'm mighty. <laughs> and you have you ever watched a cat? Not not a fat cat like Garfield, because those are boring, but like a, a real wild cat. And I've seen these guys jump up and, like, I mean, God, like one of the other ones, 
it jumped up almost like six feet in the air and grabbed a bird that was flying by. I was like, holy shit. I mean, um, we're all, or, uh, you know, a lot of people are watching uh, football or baseball. And humans aren't, aren't that capable. Or maybe we are, but there's, there's a lot of people that need a, a chair that pushes them out of it so they can stand up. They have a little cart that wheels them around because their, their legs don't work anymore. Or their backs are bad. Or they're, I, I've never seen these guys ask for anything, you know, I mean, I've done some things around here that helps the native populations thrive. I have uh, some composting areas that, you know, mice like to um, grow in, and so you know they they, they reproduce. But so these <laughs> so these guys, uh, whenever I go to the compost pile, there's three or four cats. They're just hanging out. They're just chilling, laying in the sun, enjoying their day, listening, watching. Well, a little mouse comes out, and he's like, "Hey, look, it's sunny. It's nice." Got a full belly. He's playing around a little bit with his little buddies. Well, then the cats just go eat them. And that's one of my mottos here at Hawk's Haven is, Welcome to Hawk's Haven, where predator and prey are on display. This is where natural law is expressed. It's anarchy. It's natural order. It's without rulers. It's based on efficiency and transparency and accountability. So I'm not going to hold on to these the whole day. I really like them. It's one of my favorite... It's one of my favorite things that I grow here. Well, so far. My fruit trees haven't yet started producing. But I mean, you take some, like you take one of these and you mix it up with like um, some guacamole, you know, like an avocado and, um, you know, maybe maybe just like a little bit of vinegar, um, you know, some peppers and, you know, just a little bit of salt. But you can really make really good good food, and it's free. Well, most of it. You know some? No? So you prefer mice? <laughs> you prefer mice and birds, huh? Anyway. Hawkshaven is a place to learn how to grow emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. The body and the mind we learn how to master our bodies. We learn how to master our mind. We learn how to recognize that power of right now, where calmness and peace is found. Recognizing that nature can teach us a lot. We've got a labyrinth to walk. The labyrinth works its way back and forth across the hillside. Because life is frequency. You know, light, sound, uh, everything. Everything is frequency. When you walk, it's left and then right, left and right. And your butt swing one way and then the other. You know, it's it's frequency. It's it's a motion. It's a wave pattern. And that's what life is. You know, sometimes you have ups and sometimes you have downs. And sometimes life's going for you and. Sometimes it feels like life's happening to you. There's a lot of power in that right now moment of recognizing when you think that life is happening to you, there's actually a lesson for you to learn because you you haven't learned something or you're not you're not de you're not displaying or demonstrating something. Right? And so when we stop for a moment and we recognize what 
what just happened, why did it happen, what choices did I make in my life that brought me to this point in my life, or this point of the labyrinth, did I turn left when I should have turned right? I should have taken a left turn in Albuquerque, says, um, I know that wasn't a good voice impression of uh, Bugs Bunny, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> right, you don't even care. I know. Take of the fuck's Bugs Bunny. Huh? Where's Bugs Bunny? I'll eat him. <laughs> we turn left, we turn right, we make choices to, you know, uh, you know, go to college or go to work, or um, eat this food or eat that food, or consume something in my life that somebody else created, or create in my life something that I desire, right? And so when we do that, we are recognizing that life isn't just a random ha happening. Sometimes we can't explain how it's happening. That's because we're not we're not yet looking deep enough. It's not deep enough outside of us that we need to look. We're looking within ourselves. We spend that time in meditation. I learned meditation from a happy monk. He said, you know, he says a lot of people will say that they don't have 20 or 30 minutes to uh, dedicate to meditation, especially two or three times a day, right? I agree. You know, life's busy. But when we recognize that um, the shortest meditation might be the best one, then we can change the perception because he said all I need for you to do is meditate for one second I said one second really how how is that gonna have any kind of benefit and he says let's just try it he says so it took me a minute to teach you I said okay so it's gonna take you a minute to teach me a second meditation he says <laughs> I'm accomplishing the impossible here okay you're stressed out So he says, so what can you control? I said, I don't, I don't know, I guess I can control me, right? And, yeah, very good. Well, if you can realize that you can control you, and you can only control you right now, right now is that one second. Okay. So how do we, how do we realize that? How do we always hold on to that? He says, the power is in the breath. He says, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and at this point in time, I, I was like, okay, when am I supposed to breathe out, and so I finally, I had to exhale, and he says, I did not see, I did not, I did not say for you to exhale, I said, I know, but it, it just felt like I needed to, he's like, yeah, because life experience right there, was done. It wasn't being productive to you anymore. So you're supposed to let it go. You did what your body was naturally telling you to do. I said, oh, wow, okay, that's pretty deep. Alright, says breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe into your belly, filling all the way into your chest. Breathe out through your mouth. Exhaling effortlessly. You're letting it go. You're letting it go because it doesn't matter anymore. It's no longer a part of what you need to be who you are. The breath is like life. The breath is energy. Energy. The energy that we need to sustain life. And when we breathe in, we're breathing in that life experience. And when we hold on to that breath, we're taking it for all the, all the benefit that it has for us. And there's a lot of benefits in holding the breath we can recognize in a meditative state of mind.
So breathing in, we experience that life until it becomes to the point that it feels toxic. You don't, you, you, you're like, okay, I need, I need new. Okay, so you let it out. But then you hold at the bottom of your breath. You hold at the bottom of your breath, and then you realize you're like, okay, this is too much too. I, I need air. I, I need to breathe in. And so you breathe in with appreciation and gratitude. Because if you didn't get it, you're done. You're, you're turning back into this. Dirt. Nothing. Nothingness. Your body. It's going to take a little while, especially if you put it in a metal or w big wooden box with uh, formaldehyde. <laughs> I ran all the way through it. Well, why are you trying to hold on to that thing? Let it go back to the ground. Let it turn back into a tree. Let it turn back into beauty. Holding on to that decayed corpse. So that's why graveyards are haunted, because people think that they're still the body. <laughs> a mentor of mine has a meditation on uh, on YouTube. It's called Ishakriya Yoga. Basically, it's just it's helping you to recognize that you're not the body or the mind. They are the accumulations of this environment that you've gained. And if you've consciously gained your impressions from the environment, you're going to have a healthy body, healthy mind. But if you've unconsciously or been programmed in a way, like almost like brainwashing, to eat certain foods, live a certain way, take care of your body in a certain way, you might not be experiencing <clears throat> what's most beneficial for you. And a lot of people aren't. You know, a lot of people, myself included, when I was younger, I watched a lot of tell a vision. And in that tell a vision, it, it kind of shaped, I guess unconsciously, in ways me of, of the way I was reacting to my environment. You know, it, it was easy to make me mad. It was easy <laughs> it was easy to make me sad. It you know, I would I would laugh because everybody else is laughing. It was easy to make me happy. It was easy the my environment was definitely controlling me more than I was controlling me. And so when I started becoming conscious of that right now moment, and and now it's been um, a few years that I'm, I'm really aware of that right now moment, and it's been really a whole different life. I mean, I love my life now. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it with nobody. I mean, I live in nature. And nature likes me. I like it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and since pe or since nature likes me, most of the time when I'm around people, they like me too. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to piss on their parade, you know. I I feel that we're all reflections of each other, and we all should be helping each other. We should be helping each other grow, and we should be able to share ideas voluntarily. Not, not, not because I have an idea should I be able to make you do it, right? I'm crouched over. Normally my posture is much better, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm not cutting off my head because normally I, I do that in my videos. So I'm trying to be conscious of that too because <laughs> I, don't, I don't see what I'm recording here. So anyway, like... Voluntarily, we can participate with each other. Because if I have a good idea, I don't need to hire anybody to force you to do it. I, I don't. I don't have to try to do. It, I don't have to try to force you myself. I mean, that's that's kind of a shitty life, right? I mean, if I have a good idea, I can share it with you, if you're interested. And then, 
from there, you're smart enough to know that, huh, do I want that in my life? That, that thought or that, um, that knowledge or that experience? It, it, is that something that I want to bring into my life? Well, if your answer is yes, well, then you're just going to be like, hey, Brock, can we hang out a little bit? <laughs> I say, no problem. Let's hang out. And, um, but if, but if it was a dumb idea, you're just going to be like, some, some, can you believe that dude? He was suggesting going across the planet and killing people. Yeah. For, yeah, for fucking oil. Can you believe that shit? No, let's fucking ignore his ass because it's not a good idea. You know, we can be producing our, our own fuels locally because that would be a better idea. Now, if I came to the idea with that, I'd say, hey, you know, like all this grass clippings, because there's a lot of it around here. You, they, they fill up like truckloads of it. They go to the dump every day. Right? But if these grass clippings were taken and put in a black, um, basically like a, like a trash can, right? A, 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 a vessel, a black vessel, and so the sun warms it up. You put grass inside of it, and then you take your poop, and you put it inside there. Maybe you take cat poop, or dog poop, or goat poop, or <laughs> whoever's poop you have. You you put it in there, and then you might take like some um, vegetables or some fruit husks and stuff like that, and you grind it up. Or just throw it in there. And then, basically, you're creating like a mechanical stomach that creates farts. And when I was in... When I was in my less conscious days, I, I had watched a video on YouTube of people lighting their farts on fire. And I was like, holy shit, that's like... Um, that's really funny. But that... Um, that also means that methane is flammable gas. And if it's a flammable gas, it could be used in an internal combustion engine to produce power. Right? You know, to produce energy. Because nature is producing energy that we're throwing away. And so then I started doing research when I became a little more conscious <clears throat> about the uses of methane. And right now, farmers that have the equivalent demand on electricity of, you know, basically, uh, I mean, at least a small city, you know, of, of just people living rurally with gardens and stuff, they, they could support a small city with their electrical uh, de generation that they're doing. And they're using methane. They're using the cow poopy, <laughs> the cow poopy, or the horse poopy, and they, you know, and then you mix water in with it. So, you know, basically they're creating a mechanical stomach that then uses uh, heat from the sun to uh, produce methane, and then the methane powers a generator that gives them electricity. I was like, well, that should be more popular. <laughs> and then I started learning about how a little bit of electricity then run through water, salt water or urine, can produce hydrogen. Well now hydrogen is like jet fuel. And hydrogen is like super high octane that might even work better than methane. I was like, well holy shit. <laughs> Why isn't this more popular? Well then I, I started doing more research and I started looking at more things and I realize that it's just, it's not popular because advertising is expensive. And YouTube's free, so they're like, hey, we'll share it on YouTube, and if people are wanting to do that, then they can just do it. And they can source all of their things locally, and they can really um, step into clean, renewable energy. And I, started, and I started thinking, I'm like, okay, this consciousness thing is nuts. <laughs> I'm learning really cool stuff. 
And I'm like, okay, well, what about housing? What about housing? And you ask into the consciousness. And, and then all of a sudden, you, you, you come across like an earth ship um, page. I'm like, what the hell is an earth ship? And I opened up a page of earth ship. And earth ships use tires and glass bottles and concrete. And then, like, uh, for, to create beautiful, beautiful houses. And they're doing this up in, like, uh, Taos, New Mexico, I believe. And I think there's, like, a place in Arizona. Yeah, it's, it's they're beautiful. And it looked more like something like the Flintstones would have built. But it's energy efficient. It heats and cools itself. It doesn't cost a lot to build. Basically, anybody can build it. They just have to learn the basic principles. And it lasts for hundreds of years. And it won't catch fire because it's all out of like concrete and rock. It's all covered in concrete. So you have like basically the, the insulation capacity of a cave. And then you have the... Uh, you have a greenhouse on the south side. In the northern hemisphere, you have a greenhouse on the south side of the, uh, of the home. And that helps to stabilize temperatures. And it's like all glass. So, you know, I mean, it's, it makes your house feel very open. And then the water is used at least two or three times before it finally goes into the ground, where then it's benefiting the trees. The way we're doing things doesn't make sense. All of the water from the land is quickly diverted to the rivers, which goes to the oceans. But then we wonder why our hillsides are catching fire, and we have drought, and you know, and we, we used to have beavers that uh, would keep water to the land, but then we kept killing them because they they look cool being worn on your head until they learned about silk, and you can just make a hat out of silk, and then they liked those. I don't know. It's crazy. But, but the beaver would be holding water to the land. And everywhere that the beaver goes, their environments are improved. Let's see if we're even still rolling. I don't want to keep talking if I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's let's do this. <laughs> All right, we still got time. So with permaculture, we hold water to the land, and holding water to the land recharges the aquifers. And when we recharge the aquifers, we are doing what other models around the earth right now have accomplished. In less than 10 years, once the landscape is shaped to hold on to water, it soaks in, it recharges the aquifer, which makes the ground like a big sponge. And then that big sponge, temperature stabilization happens. Um, more regular condensation happens because you're holding that moisture in the earth. At nighttime, it's um, creating like a, a dew, a moisture. It's, it, you know, the evaporation has happened in the daytime. It starts to cool at night. It condensates. It creates like a dew all over the ground. And then the plants don't even need you to come by with a hose and water them because it's happening every day. And we create those environments by holding water to the land. And by other models doing this, they've been able to get creeks to start flowing again that haven't flowed for hundreds of years because now the water's like a big sponge. Well, if you stand a sponge up on end, the water will drain out of it. And if it has nowhere to go, it might even, if it's up here, like up on the mountain, and there's a... Uh, a fissure in the rocks. The water will flow up through there and then it'll start flowing down as a stream. And then if you take those streams, the, then the beaver, that's where he comes in. The beaver says, whoa, hey, let's slow that water down. I could use that to build a little fish, fish pond. So I got my food growing right here. And he's smart, you know. He's, he's natural. And so he starts to harvest some of the resources, and he cuts down some trees, and he drags them around, and I still can't believe they are so strong. 
Like, cause I've seen some big trees. <laughs> like, how the hell does that beaver move that tree? It's amazing. Um, but they do. And so then they then they they haul in dirt and they haul in and they and they pack that in there and they build a dam and the water fills up and it starts to um, really go into the water. And now and now um, animals they like the path of least resistance, so they're always walking in a way that is easiest for them. I mean, you know, if they're spooked, they'll run straight up a hill, sure, but most of the time they're just kind of walking in the direction they want to go in a general gradual slope. It's easy. Although they wear little pathways into the mountain. And when the water falls on the land, it comes to their pathway and then follows their pathway and stays with the land farther than if it just went right down the hill. So nature is working to build swells. Nature's working to build check dams to make their environment better. But we as humans think that we know better because somebody gave us a piece of paper from an institution that says, yeah, yeah, we taught you lots of stuff. You know, they did. They taught you a lot of stuff that hasn't been working for anybody for a long time. So, we recognize it, and we say, okay, well, hey, we can recognize that if we go back and follow the way nature's model is, rather than somebody who's trying to make a lot of money off of us, we might thrive. We might even sir thrive <laughs> in simplicity. Ah, I love the wind. Huh. Life is that simple. When's the last time you enjoyed the wind? When's the last time you just sat in the dirt and paid attention. You know, there's things like that. They did teach us things like that in school. But it was it was the field trip. Or it was the really cool thing that you're looking forward to from learning at school. You know, yeah, I mean like that that was one of my favorite days was when I went out on a nature hike in our in our in our classroom. There was another time we planted trees. I went back and visited the trees that we planted when I was five. And it's freaking huge. I was like, holy shit. I did that when I was five. And now I'm 45. And that, fu that fucker must be like 70 feet tall. Maybe more. I don't even know. It's a big tree. I mean, I only grew to six feet tall. Or six one. Uh, I mean, shit. That tree... It, really started out be be something small but grew into something very big anyway there's there's a lot of lot of things in life that um, we could probably recognize a different way of doing and we could be building our immune systems in a way that like uh, you know, like those little cats I've, n I've never seen any of them with the sniffles <laughs> I've never I've never had to uh, even think of uh, taking any of them to the vet or something, I think they would be like, "What the hell are you doing to me? Don't, don't do that again. We, we won't be friends." <laughs> I mean, I really think that that's the uh, case. That I would find if uh, if I did that, they're like, "Hey, we trusted you. Don't be putting needles in me, microchips and shit. What are you thinking of, dude? What? <laughs> I thought we were friends." That was like an assault. Lucky I don't... I don't kill you in your sleep. <laughs> you know? Anyway. Just want to share a little bit with you about what I've learned from nature. And I continue to learn. Nature teaches me so much. And, uh... I found my simplicity in life. I teach yoga now, I teach meditation, I teach about permaculture. I teach 
about wellness and sustainability and alternative energies and how we can be most efficient with our time and um, so anyway like now this uh, this bundle of, of grass that I've gathered from this little corridor the goats are gonna love that and it uh, helps them to recognize I'm a pretty cool guy too so if I if I bring them <laughs> if I bring them salad every day they're like alright dude's cool we'll stick around anyway namaste I hope everybody's uh, doing well in this time of quarantine um, I'm lucky that my quarantine is in nature so yours can be too I don't think cities are meant to be lived in cities are meant to be visited where we can share our experiences, we can share the things that we make or create. But then we go back to nature. Where birds are flying over and <clears throat> animals roam free. And people roam free. I can walk in any direction for miles. I, I don't all the time because that's walking miles. <laughs> but I have a lot of things to do here so um, it's always a chance to work out though so you know I've been you know while I'm talking with you I haven't been as active as I normally am but like you know from this you could be doing this from planking positions so you could be doing it in headstands or you could <laughs> enjoy the gong whenever you find a rock <laughs> no, there's another one all right Thank you. <clears throat> Feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, participate in the revolution because we don't need to. We don't need to be violent in what we're doing. What we need to be is vigilant. And when we're vigilant in what we're doing, we create a world. That's really close, huh? <laughs> we create a world that we're really going to enjoy on this co-creation of experience. <laughs>